Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Question I have today. We have the word. We have the truth. But what are we doing with it? We were called to be disciples of Christ. We were told to go out and spread the gospel to every nation, kindred and tongue. In these last days, what are we doing with it? Let us ponder that question for a while. And in your own time, give yourself the answer. And when you would have done that, go on your knees and say, God, help me to do what I was called to do. In Jesus' name. In Revelation, John 22, 12, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work, according to his work. Jesus is coming and he wants to reward you. Hebrews, the Bible says, as it is appointed for men to, to die once, but after that, there is a judgment. How will you stand when death comes knocking on your door? Will you be ready? How will you be found wanting? When you turn on the television, there is breaking news. Death by accident. Murder. Natural disasters. Drug overdose. Childbirth. Wars. Disease. No one knows when Jesus will return. How will you stand when death comes knocking on your door. But Jesus said, Behold. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and dine with him. And he with me. I don't know about you, but we must feast at the feet of Jesus. We must feast on his, on his words daily. For when the bridegroom cometh, we must be found ready and waiting. Today it's time to stop running. Stop running after the things of this world. Look upon Jesus. Look after the things of God. Jesus, he walked upon the waters. He parted the Red Sea. He healed the sick and raised the dead. He has power over life and death. Give life and he take life away. He sets up kings and he take them down. Today he's calling on you. From your slumber and sleep, he said, wake up and trim your lambs. Wake up before it is too late for time is running out and tomorrow tomorrow may never come. Awake my brothers and sisters and seek the Lord while he may be found. Don't worry about what you need for God will provide. The Bible says for every beast of the forest are mine. The cattle on a thousand hills are his. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. Don't worry about what you will eat or drink. He provides for Elijah in the desert. And he will provide for you if you put your trust in him. So that we are sinking deeper and deeper in our sins. But God is still calling. We're running after the wealth and forget, forgetting to pray. But God is still calling. We forgot to walk us up this morning. Who put food upon our tables. Clothes upon our back. Who gave us strength to get wealth. But God is still calling. Be careful for time is running out. Make God the center of your life. Let it be your joy. 
Let him bear your pain. Let him know that you depend upon him. Praise God every morning. Praise him at noontime. Praise him every evening. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Be careful, death may come suddenly. It may find you at your weakest point when you're sinking deep in your sin. Drinking and misbehaving. No time for God, I'm just taking a break. I told you the other night, some of us treat God like a fat cake. When we need Him, we call His name, and when we don't, we, we, we take a book and we put it on the bookshelf to gather dust. God in the pot cake. He knows what we are doing daily. He wants our hearts. There's no pretending with God. Wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. The soul that sin it shall surely die. God sent his only son. He died a gruesome death. Abuse, spot upon, beat him, come of turns upon his head when you are not. But yet, we pretend as if we have time. Yet, we refuse to spread the good words to our brothers and sisters. Yet, we preach and preach to ourselves. And not to those who really need to hear the word of God. For we know not the day nor the hour when the eastern clouds will be open. The earth shall shake and the Lord shall appear. How will you stand? Lord, help me to shout. On Christ the solid rock I will stand. For all other grounds is sinking. Help me to live right today, for if I die, this very minute, be merciful unto me, dear Father. Save me by thy grace. For tomorrow is not promised to any man. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. I'm praying on an onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher grounds. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on Canaan's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Save me, O oh God, save me. Save me and help me to be ready, I pray. Help me, dear God. Help us to be ready. You remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel 4.22. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. Full of ego and pride. He made an image of gold of himself. And asked the people of God to bow down. And wash him. But Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego stood up. They were thrown into the fairy forest. But God stood for them. God stood for them. God delivered them. When we stand for God, he will stand for you. Friends, I do not want to be caught. Caught up with the things of this world. Do not allow your accomplishment to cloud your judgment. That you lose focus on these things. And they take over your life and before you know it, you are worshipping idols. The Lord spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. He heard his voice and trembled. God removed him from his luxury. Sent him, sent him to live with the beasts of the field. He ate grass until he acknowledged that the most like God ruled it over the kingdom of men and gave it to whomever he will. At the end of his punishment, Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged God. He blessed the Most High God. Praise and honor him whose dominion is everlasting and his 
kingdom from generation to generation. But Belshazzar, his son, he became king. Sometimes our memory is too short. Sometimes we forgot what God has done for us. We forgot how when we were jobless, he provided a job. And when we were homeless, he provided a roof over our heads. We forgot when we had no shoes on our feet, how he sent someone to bring a pair of shoes. We forgot when we were poor and walk in the street, when he sent someone to feed us. We forgot what God has done for us. Sometimes our memory is just too short. So this Belshazzar became king, forgot the story of his grandfather, how he dishonored God and ate grass like an ox for seven years. He hosted a party, great feast, feast of thousands of his dignitaries, drunk wine, flirting with women, showing off with his friends, having a good old time. Something like some of the things that we do today. We go to work and we plan for dignitaries and VPVIBs. But when it's time to come to church, an hour is not enough. An hour when you're ready to go home, it's too long. When it comes to witnessing for Christ, we have no plan, no strategy. But when it's time for work, we are on time. Dress up neat and sweet in our suit, ready to go down the road to get some dollars. But we forget God. He's on the back burner, on the bookshelf. When we need him, we come. But one of these days, he said, depart from me, you walkers of iniquity, for I never knew you. We need to get our priorities straight, my brothers and sisters. We made a fatal mistake. He took the golden vessel from the house of the true and living God. And his princes and wives and concubines drank in them. To add insult to injury, they praised the God of gold and silver and of brass and iron of wood and stone. But while they were partying for the devil in Satan's kingdom, Having a good old time. The Bible says that very hour, the finger of a man or the finger of God wrote across the canvas upon the wall of the king's palace. The king saw and his drawings of his lion were loose. His body organs malfunctioned. His knees shook. Afraid Scared, he wet himself like a baby. Many, many take care of us. Many God has numbered your kingdom. Take care, though I weighed in the balance and from want. You fasten. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. In that very in that very night, King Belshazzar was slain. Dead. No escape. Dead. He died in his sins. No chance to repent. Let this not be your story. Come on to Jesus now. While you still have that chance. If you are afraid, have faith. Leave your friends behind. Go down on your knees and cry out to Jesus. Cry out like Paul. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hold on today to God's unchanging hand. We pain men Job for a night. But joy, sweet joy comes in the morning. Hold on, Jesus is coming. Hold on, wake up from your slumber and sleep. 
Jesus is coming. Nothing in this life matters. Romans tell us clearly if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. For whether we live or die, we belong to God. I couldn't put it any simpler than this. We live for the Lord, we die for the Lord. We, we belong to God. You're not your own. You are bought with a price. Paid with the blood from Prince Emmanuel Vane. Right there on Calvary. But he cried out in love. Forgive them, Lord. For they know not what they do. Today let us make a decision to live for God. For of the death, there is a judgment. God promised that if you live for him, and if you die in him, on that great resurrection morning, I'll shout, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? For the grave will hold my body down. I'm going up to a place up there, up there, where my Savior divine lived. I'm going up to a place where there will be no more death, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more disease. I'm going up by the grace of God. Sweet joy, peace and happiness forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Joy forevermore. Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise for us. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, before you can even wink your eyes, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible body will put on incorruptible and this mortal shall put on immortality Amen. but of the wicked power of choice how will you stand when the inevitable happens but the wicked when the wicked man die, his expectation shall perish. And the hope of unjust men perishes. But the righteous is delivered out of trouble. And the wicked cometh in his stead. There are two resurrections. How you live matters. How you die matters. John says, and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Those who have done good. Those who believe on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who went down into the watery grave of baptism and rise up to walk in the newness of life. Saying the things I used to do, I'll do them no more. The place I used to go. I'll go there, go there no more because I've been touched, transformed, reformed in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. There's no playing games or twisting this. The choice is clear. It's 
It's either heaven or hell. Life or death. Knox, the Bible says, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unrighteous. Daniel says, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. Some to shame and everlasting content. How you live matters, my brothers and sisters. How you die matters. No pastor can pray you into the kingdom of God. They can say what they want. But if I have Jesus on my side, I have nothing to worry about. Go to these services and you stand on the men stand on the pulpit of God and say he's somewhere in heaven with the Lord. Lie! When you're dead, you're done in the grave until Jesus comes. David is still in the grave. Man of the God's own heart. Have to make a choice, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has the power. We have to say hallelujah, praise the Lord. Blessed and holy are those who are caught up in the first resurrection. For over us, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests. This is the promise of God. They shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. I don't know about you. I don't want to be in any prison. I want to be in a land where there is milk and honey. A land where there are streets of gold. A mansion up there for me. I'm not going to be in any prison, in any trick chains, in any dungeon anywhere. But God has given me the chance to choose. He sent his son to give me that chance. And I'm going to take it by the grace of God. I'm asking you to do the same today. And he shall go out and do what he does best. Deceive the nations which are in the four corners, four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog. To gather them together. To battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. I can't count the sand of the sea. Can't count the sands of the sea. And they went up to the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. You can't fight against God and win. To them, encouraging to choose God's side and live. Today, it's time to make a decision for Christ. Death will come and it is certain. But God has promised you and I eternal life. If you want to be caught up in the first resurrection, I'm inviting you to come to the altar today. If you have not yet accepted Christ, I'm inviting you to come to the altar today. For John says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though we are dead, yet we shall live. Come just as you are, as the priest did come. Come just as you are. For a time will come when you will hear these words in Revelation 22. He that is unjust. Let him be unjust too. He that is filthy, 
And in be filled to still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, the Lord said, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. And today, if you will take a walk for Christ, John says, John 14, let not your hearts be troubled, my brothers and sisters. You believe in God, believe also in in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also as the priest him see. I surrender all to you. your Holy Spirit of God has brought conviction through our souls 
So we thank you today in a very special way. Oh God, the words that we have listened to. We ask, oh God, that your words would not die with us the moment we step out these doors. But, oh God, your words would find lodgment within our hearts. Your words that is powerful. Your words, the Bible declared, that is quick and sharper than any twitch sword. Your words, oh God, that is powerful. Your words that are able to heal. Your words, oh God, that's able to sustain our souls. We thank you today for your spoken words. Oh God, as we have come today, we're committing ourselves unto you. We ask, oh God, that you may fill, you may saturate our minds with your presence and with your spirit, oh God. That you would energize us. That your Holy Spirit, oh God, would motivate us. That you would bring us even into a closer walk with you. Oh God, you know the challenges of this life that we are faced with. You know the obstacles that we encounter each day. Yes. You know the pain that we endure. You know the sins that does so easily beset us. But today, oh God, we come to this altar, laying everything down at your feet. Yes. Trading, oh God, of a garment of heaviness. Trading, O oh God, of the cloaks of unrighteousness. And we come to the O God by faith, claiming your forgiveness, claiming your strength. Ask, O oh God, to be clothed with your righteousness so that we can live a life that's true and pleasing in your sight. Dear Jesus, there are many, many, many souls to be saved. And the God, we had a voice that you would speak through. So we come to the asking, dear Jesus, that you may use us in an effective, in a mighty way, so that, oh God, we can go forth spreading your gospel, this good news of salvation to those who are dying. Oh, Jesus, we ask that you may have mercy upon us, dear God. We pray that you may fill this church with your spirit, fill this church with your presence, Empower every member of this church, O oh God. Empower us with your spirit, dear Jesus, so that as we go forth, O oh God, we can tell men and women of your love. O oh God, as we look around us, we know that you are on your way. There are wars around us, dear Jesus. There are crimes around us. O oh God, everything is pointing to Jesus soon coming. So we ask, O oh God, that we would be ready for your coming. That we will go forth and take this message forth in urgency. Take this message forth, to God, to those dying in sin. Oh God, reach down and touch everyone today. Reach down, oh God, and cleanse everyone. Cleanse this nation, oh God, of unrighteousness. Cleanse this nation, we pray, of crimes. Cleanse this nation, oh God. Cleanse us and watch us. Oh God, we pray that you would be with the next week that is coming up. As you have chosen another man, thank you once more, oh God, for the way you have used Elder Richards. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit and your power will bestow upon now on Brother Sifra. You have granted him your message. O oh God, you have bestowed upon him your power. We ask, O oh God, that as he stands in the pulpit night after night, that, O oh God, we will not see him standing, but we will see a reflection of the Christ Jesus. As he proclaims your word, as he delivers your message, oh God, our souls will be brought into a closer walk with you, and lives will be changed, lives will be converted, and you, Jesus, will come. Oh God, until then, keep us faithful, keep us trusting, keep us depending upon you, oh God, and at last, when you shall come, we pray that you may take us home to that place, that place where there will be no more pain, that place where there will be no more sickness. That place where there will be no more dying. That place where there will be no more crying. For your word tells us that the former things would have all passed away. Oh God, we look forward to that day when we shall hear it as our Lord and as our Savior and as our coming King. The one who has died for us. The one of God who gave us redemption to your blood. 
Lord, we thank you and we praise you today. And let all of God's people say amen and amen. Amen. So, um, see everyone on Sunday night. We start at 7 p.m. And the, the speaker will be our beloved pastor, Pastor Roy, for the next week. So we'll see everyone. Yes, Pastor Roy will be speaking for, this, for the rest of the week. So see everyone out. See everyone out on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Hey.